Hey everybody, I am back with another project made on one of my live streams. This is a mixed media canvas and I absolutely love it. I am going to be using some Minte papers and uh, before I get into the project, if you guys can give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know if you've ever heard of Minte papers. And as always, all of the supplies are listed in the description box down below and they are affiliate links. And really quickly, that just means that if you click on the link and make a purchase, I get a small commission and it does help me out a lot and I do appreciate it. All right, so I am using Minte papers, like I said before, and this is from the Bird Song Collection, is absolutely gorgeous. I am using the six by six papers and I am using also a, a flat canvas board. I got them on Amazon. I think there is eight in the pack or 10 in the pack. I will have it listed in the description box down below. I am just layering a couple papers on together and just to create a some layers and interest to the project. So first I added the blue paper and now I am going to add the wood grain and I should have cut out the center of that blue paper. I feel it is wasted and I'm just cringing inside thinking of that paper underneath the wood grain paper. Uh, so I added the paper with Fabri-Tac and now I'm going to add a couple layers of clear gesso. This way all of the sprays I'm going to add will not seep into the paper. It kind of sits on top and it just preps the paper so that I can add any type of other mediums that I want. So while I add the gesso, I am going to mention that this is captured from my webcam. It is um, the video that is from YouTube, so I download it to my laptop and then that's how I am editing it for those of you that are not uh, fans of the live stream. So I know that the quality isn't as great as my video camera, but that is how I'm going to be able to give these types of videos for you guys. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, and with that out of the way, I am adding some white gesso now to the center-ish of the project. And this way it, it, it will frame all of the embellishments and I feel like it helps everything flow nicely together and um, it kind of grounds all of those embellishments that I'm going to add. So I am now adding some crackle paste and this is from Cosmic Shimmer. It doesn't have any shimmer in it. Uh, but I really do like it and I've said this lots before but I do want to make sure that those that were curious about it in my haul video quite a while ago um, are um, able to know that it holds up really well the cracks are great it doesn't flake off I haven't had any issues with it and I always tend to add sprays and more water on top and like I said it I haven't had any issues all right, so that is drying and I did actually dry it with my heat tool. If you're careful and uh, use your heat tool a little bit farther away uh, and like I said, if you're careful, you can heat it up and it cracks perfectly. I did this with the Prima crackle paste, uh, but if you want the best results, you do want to let it uh, crack on its own and dry on its own. Uh, I am now uh, adding some white gesso to the uh, clay pieces uh, from the molds and I talk about this quite often that I do a ton of them at once and then I have them on hand. Right now I'm using some uh, archival ink and stamping with a Finnebear stamp. I believe this one is Messy Script I think it's called and that way I have a little bit of texture and uh, in the background and with the archival ink it's not going to bleed when I add any other mediums on top. All right, now I'm using a Finnebear stencil. I absolutely love this stencil and I believe I am using paper paste, paper texture paste, sorry, and I absolutely love the paper texture paste. It is one of my favorites and I uh, use it most often more than the light paste now. I find that the uh, paper paste really takes a lot of the sprays and the water and everything that I add to my projects later on really well. All right, so I am now blending out that paste and I like doing this 
again, just to kind of have everything flow nicely together. And I really like how the paste just blends into the paper rather than having those stark lines of the stencil. Uh, and I don't know, I just like to look a little bit better. All right, so I decided to pull out my chalk edgers. What? I know, <laughs> they are super old, but they still have color and juice in them. I am so, so surprised because I've had these for quite a few years and they work just as good as new. So I am using them as watercolors. So this one is teal damask. And what I do is I just add a little bit on my mat here, which is from Tonic Studios. It's the easy clean mat. And then I add some water and I am using a Finnebear paintbrush, but you can use any type of paintbrush, but I do ask, get asked all the time what types of paintbrushes that I use. I am just using the Finnebear ones just because I have them, but any cheap old paintbrush will do. And I am going to just add that teal color to the center of the project there. All right, I wanted a little bit of dimension and depth to the project, so I am going in with a black, a black chalk edger. I can't recall the name. And now I am going to water it down and it does uh, mix in with that teal color and tone down a little bit. I know in the live stream, people were a little bit worried <laughs> about that really dark color, but I think it ends up looking really great. All right, so after that dries, I am going to add some cheesecloth to the center. This just gives a nice texture, dimension, uh, added interest. And then I'm going to add these uh, uh, paper clay pieces and I want them staggered. So one on one side and the other on the other. And then this uh, small resin frame from Prima. These are my absolutely absolute favorites, even though they are a little expensive. I just can't help but buy them and use them. <laughs> I hope Prima comes out with more molds so that we can create more frames for ourselves because if you haven't bought molds, they are definitely a great investment because you save so much on embellishments because even though the molds are, I believe, 10 or $12, you save so much on um, creating your own embellishments. All right, so I added the frame to the center and now I'm going to add even more cheesecloth so that it can kind of hang over the frame and give more texture and interest to the project. And I'm just kind of playing around with placement of flowers as well. That's why they're kind of placed there, but I did take them off. I am adding one flower um, behind there and I took out the center of it because it had really big stamens and then I folded it in half just to, to create um, like more of a fluffier um, look. Now I'm going to take the other half of that and then uh, put it on the bottom left corner. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And then one of the stem flowers on top there I'm adding some soft teal color bloom spray and now some dragonfly blue color bloom spray. And what I did with the clay pieces is I didn't add so much gesso on them that it got in all of those nooks and crannies and the grooves and the design of the clay piece. I just kind of brushed over the top so it will sit differently and soak in differently um, where I added the gesso versus where it is a paper clay and it really adds a lot of interest to the project All right, I added that Tim Holtz chip piece I think it's called uh, Onto some paper and then I added it to the center and then I'm going to add one of these uh, Locks, I believe they're from Ingvild Bohm. You definitely cannot find these anywhere. At least I can't uh, so if you do find them, snag them up. They are amazing. They they have, I think, six different locks. They're really cool. And um, yeah, I absolutely love them. I don't hoard them, but I carefully decide what projects I'm going to use them on. Uh, and now I'm going to add some more texture with the art stones. And I used some soft matte gel to mix in with the art stones. Uh, so that they will stick really well to the project. And this is one of the last steps that you want to do 
or let them dry completely and then if you want to add color uh, like the next day um, I would suggest that because what I've done in the past is added them to my project and then immediately add color to them and they just don't stick anymore because all of that uh, spray and water will mix in with that adhesive and it just waters the adhesive down and it doesn't stick as well. So that may might be a little bit of a tip for you guys. And I really like how these look just as is. And I am now going to add some splatters with the uh, Picket Fence Distress Spray Stain. And that is going to complete the project. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And the channel I want to feature today is Creations by Helene RH. Uh, if you click on her beautiful face there, it will take you to her channel. She is amazing. I hope you guys check her out. And I want to thank you guys again for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys later.